Welcome back to our video module on dynamics. Today, I'd like to revisit our cart problem. So we have our cart. It's going to be traveling, al traveling along, as always, with some initial velocity. But today, as the cart's going along, we're going to apply a brake. The front wheel is going to have some sort of brake. And um, I want to know what is the cart's deceleration. So what is the acceleration of the cart? The rub on this problem is I want to know how elegantly we can find the solution. Today we're going to revisit our equations of motion using what we know about angular momentum conservation to put one more tool in our toolbox. And your free body diagram would look something like this. We have some sort of normal force at one, some sort of normal force at two, as well as some sort of frictional force at two. We have a gra force of gravity operating at the center of mass, and we would combine all these to get some sort of um, linear momentum equation. Some of the forces equals um, mass times acceleration, and we could rewrite that in vector notation, force one plus force two plus force of gravity equals mass times acceleration. This will yield one equation in the x direction, one equation in the y direction. Let me write out what that looks like. So we here we have two equations. Our unknowns include um, force two, force one, and the acceleration. So we have three unknowns, two equations. To get our third equation for our three unknowns, we could do the sum of the moments about some point, say point P, should equal the change in angular momentum about point P. This should be in vector form. So that would look like the moment at one about point P plus the moment, oh sorry, plus the moment of two applied about point P plus the moment, and we'll call the location where the force of gravity is applied, we'll call this point C. So the moment at C about point P. And on the right hand side, we'll have the position of the center of mass with respect to P crossed with the mass times the acceleration of the center of mass. Give me a second to write down what that, what those equations look like. And here we have our equation that takes into account angular momentum. We can see that positions from one to P, whatever point it is, we can figure that out, we can figure that out, we can figure this out. All the positions as we can find, they're just functions of our geometry, which leaves us with force one, force two, and the acceleration. So now we have three equations, three unknowns. We can use these to get our solution. And I expect that this is something you've seen before. This is our brute force method. Brute force, this is method one, and that is three equations, three unknowns. Let's take a look at this and see if we can do something maybe a little tricky. We have three equations and three unknowns. This is a general equation. We can choose any point about which to rotate the part, which means that if I choose the point to be at number one, this position of one in relationship to P, this will go to zero. Now I've taken out one of my variables. So zero cross F, it doesn't matter what that is, it's going to be zero. Well, let's imagine I do that. Let's imagine that I choose point P in such a way that the position between one and P is zero. That's going to change this equation. That means this equation is now going to look like this. So I have right now two unknowns. I have force two and the acceleration. 
I could combine that with what I know in the x directions. We have two equations, two unknowns. We can find the solution now a little bit more quickly. This is a mildly stylish. We'll say, we'll say slightly elegant solution. Technique number two, and that is two equations, two unknowns. Now in this situation, we took advantage of the fact that we could choose any point we wanted to eliminate one of the terms, and it was this term. Let's see if we can think that one through a little bit more. I know that if I choose a point such that one of these, su such that the cross product goes to zero, I can eliminate that term from my equation. So where does the cross product of say this first term go to zero? Well, not only at point one, but any point along the direction of the vector. If the vector is pointing at a particular point, that means that there's no rotation. That vector doesn't cause any rotation about that point. So we could also take a look at force two. So force two, really what's happening here, this is a vector and it's pointing in this direction. So we know that any point along force two is also a point where there is no moment. We find the location where both of these vectors meet. We'll call this point D. So if we choose point D, we see this term go to zero because this R1 cross F1, that's going to incur no moment. We see the same thing happen at point two. The equation we're left with in teal is simply the position from C to D cross the force of gravity equals the position from C to D crossed with the mass times the acceleration of C. We know this from the geometry. We know the force of gravity. We know this from the geometry. We have one equation and one unknown. This is scenario three. This is our best elegant solution. We have one equation, one unknown. In summary, we've used our equations of motion, both linear momentum and angular momentum, to create three equations. We have one in the x direction, one in the y direction, and then we have the angular momentum balance over here. Of course, this would change in three dimensions, but you get the idea. By mildly carefully choosing where we're rotating our mass, we can modify this equation right here so that we eliminate one of the variables. This is similar to some of the choices we made in statics when we were evaluating trusses. But we also have the ability to be thoughtful. If we can use the geometry of the problem to identify a point that eliminates multiple external forces or the torques do, the moments due to multiple external forces, we can get to the solution even more quickly. I hope this gives you another tool in your toolbox to more thoughtfully solve these types of problems. Moreover, I hope this process gives you a better elementary understanding of how angular momentum works. Thank you and I look forward to seeing you in our next video module.